Welcome to Focus on Southeast, a monthly program on issues and events impacting the campus of Southeast Missouri State University. I'm Dan Woods, General Manager of KRCU Public Radio, Southeast Missouri's NPR station. Today we're talking with Southeast President Dr. Carlos Vargas on our agenda, a preview of homecoming. We'll get an update on construction projects and the university's master plan and find out more about the solar eclipse in August 2017 and how Southeast will showcase that celestial event. All that and more are coming up on Focus on Southeast. Dr. Vargas, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Dan. It's good, to good to be here. It's always good to see you. It's always good to see you, too. Thank you very much. There have been two reported sexual assault cases on campus this year, one in February and then now one in September. And I want to give you a chance to comment on those and tell us how Southeast is addressing the issue uh, for students, faculty, and staff. Absolutely. Well, let me start by saying that uh, uh, I am personally terribly uh, troubled by those assaults. And uh, not only I alone, but uh, everybody at the university on the campus, the community, uh, is very troubled by that. So uh, what we have done over the years and we currently have is in place uh, a number of programs. First of all, uh, I think it is important to say that if anybody uh, uh, is aware of any kind of uh, sexual assault, uh, that they should uh, communicate it uh, to uh, somebody. You know, we have offices. Uh, the Department of Public Safety, of course, is, is one of them. Uh, the Campus Violence Prevention Program is a, another one. Counseling and Disability Services is another one. Uh, the Dean of Students Office and also the Office of uh, Student Conduct. So any of those offices um, is an office where uh, somebody can report uh, sexual assault. Uh, there's no time limit for reporting uh, sexual assault and so there's nothing that uh, anybody has to worry about uh, anything related to the statute of limitations or anything like that. Uh, and uh, our highest priority, of course, is the, the well-being of the students on campus uh, and, uh, of course, the community in general. Um, our uh, programs uh, and resources uh, provide 24-hour support, so that's uh, important for them, uh, for anybody to, to know. And, and we do have a website that, uh, and the university, uh, we have the uh, web pages that talk about um, uh, sexual assault and uh, give advice and recommendations to uh, anybody who either may have been uh, uh, the subject of a sexual assault or anybody who knows about uh, a sexual assault so that they can and report it. Um, we have, uh, we're very concerned. Uh, clearly, one of the things that I, I would like to remind uh, everybody and the, the students uh, and everybody else is that they really should uh, uh, not engage in activities that uh, may uh, in some way lead to that kind of situation. In other words, nobody should be placing himself or herself in a position where uh, uh, sexual assault can, can happen. I know that sometimes it is impossible to know. That is clear. There is no, no mm -hmm. doubt about that. But on the other hand, if there is uh, a, a possibility to avoid the situation that could lead to that, I think it is important to do so. Uh, so we're, again, very uh, concerned. And we continue to talk about ways to improve even more what we do currently. Uh, and, and, uh, and we will, uh, because it is... Uh, something that I am absolutely against and I want to do as much as possible to, to minimize that. And KRCU coincidentally will be holding a, an event on campus in November to uh, have a panel discussion about uh, sexual assaults on campus and mm -hmm. something that uh, the university is addressing and being out, getting out in front of, mm -hmm. uh, best I can tell, and letting people have open conversations about how to avoid it and how to uh, react when things do happen. So Yes, and I, I think that uh, Awareness is a very important aspect of this, mm -hmm. uh, making people aware of this and, and uh, encouraging conversations on campus. It is important to do so. And I think that can be uh, a good uh, uh, way of deterring that kind of situations. Mm -hmm. well, let's move on to another topic uh, that's been talked about or starting to be talked about, and that's uh, discussions about Southeast becoming a tobacco-free campus. Mm -hmm. So what, at this point, have you asked units and departments to do? Yes. What we have done is uh, uh, asked to, through the Administrative Council, uh, we have asked everybody who is represented in that uh, body to go back to their constituencies and, and ask for input and uh, uh, come back to us and tell us what their views are and what their uh, uh, feelings are. Um, we just had this very last meeting in which we received 
uh, feedback from different groups. This feedback was uh, verbal at this point. Uh, if we received uh, uh, feedback from students, uh, the student government actually did a very good job. They actually went ahead and surveyed uh, the student uh, 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 students and, and, and provided uh, us. Uh, I am in the process of reviewing it right now, but some uh, they actually did a very uh, thorough uh, survey uh, to to provide it to the students, and 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 we are just evaluating it at this point to see what the what the uh, the feelings of the students are. And uh, we also had professional staff. Uh, we also had CTS, uh, the faculty, uh, and other groups represented in the uh, in the administrative council uh, provide uh, uh, verbal input at this point. Uh, so I am in the process of evaluating that and and uh, uh, looking at what else is it uh, that we need to uh, to do before a decision can be made as to what direction to take with that. Do you have a timeline in mind on when you'd like to see something happen? Well, what I would like to do is, is uh, make a decision uh, as, uh, uh, as reasonably soon as possible. Uh, I, there's nothing uh, really that is uh, 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 causing me to rush this. I think I'd rather make sure that, uh, that the community has time to think about this. I don't want to impose any kind of artificial uh, deadline. Uh, I think that uh, it is important that we think about it and then we evaluate the options within the uh, context of uh, making sure that we are responsive to the campus community uh, and, and to, the, to the students. And of course, you know, we're concerned, I am concerned about making sure that, uh, that our student population, our staff, our faculty have the opportunity to uh, experience and exercise as much uh, 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 freedom in terms of making a, a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Any sense in the state of Missouri, are there are other campuses tobacco free? Or are we one of the few that not, are not at this point? Yes, actually that's uh, one piece of information that we are uh, we have just recently received and uh, I wouldn't give you the exact uh, percentages but clearly we are in the minority. Uh, and many, uh, the majority of the campuses uh, in Missouri uh, certainly the public institutions have uh, uh, become tobacco free. Uh, they express that in different ways. In some cases they say tobacco free, and in other cases they say tobacco and smoke free because there are so many different forms now right. um, of, uh, uh, it's not just the standard cigarette smoking, but it's uh, now we have e-cigarettes and we have, uh, of course, uh, some individuals uh, chew tobacco and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So. We're right now trying to make sure that we understand really what this all means so that uh, if we were to make a decision in this or that direction, uh, we're able to articulate uh, what is it that we are in favor or against mm -hmm. uh, uh, with clarity to avoid confusion in the community. I may be jumping way ahead here, but I'm just curious. On something like that, how do you, how do you enforce something like that? Mm. Um, if somebody were to be let's say there were some sort of ban on campus and somebody w was caught smoking, what, do you have any, from other institutions, what kind of things are done? Well, believe it or not, uh, that is one issue that is very troubling for many uh, groups and uh, many individuals uh, because nobody wants to see uh, himself or herself as being you know, at any given time the enforcer uh, and right. uh, 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 opening the door to a possible uh, violent reaction from somebody uh, in, in a form of uh, a verbal expression or, or more than that. And, and so that's something that is, is being uh, brought up to our attention. Uh, I, I can tell you that different institutions have done different things. Uh, there is a concept of soft enforcement, in which, cases, in which case uh, uh, the, the level of enforcement is not one where it is uh, very rigid. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're looking also at that, wha mm -hmm. what it means to enforce it and, and, and how you do that. It is also clear, and we should not forget, that uh, peer pressure in general is uh, a very important form of uh, deterrent. And in uh, and, and some institutions, actually, people do that. Uh, they, I know that in some cases they rely on, on peer pressure and individuals realizing that they're doing something that is not uh, allowed 
uh, even though nobody actually mm -hmm. goes and tells them to stop, uh, they do know that they're doing that. And that actually, uh, over time, uh, becomes pressure that you almost feel it growing in individuals uh, without necessarily anybody uh, actively going and telling them to stop. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be looking at those things. That's why um, I said that there's really no, no deadline yeah. because I think these are the some of the things that have to be uh, absorbed, uh, digested uh, mentally, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then based on that uh, reach a, a point at which we can make a decision. Okay. Well, how about we take a short break? When we continue our conversation with Dr. Vargas, we'll ask him about homecoming at Southeast and we'll also talk about athletics. And later, we'll get an update on construction projects and find out more about the university's master plan. You're watching Focus on Southeast and we'll be right back.